Okay, it is now 4.30. We'd like to thank you all for being here with us tonight. Tonight we're proud to present Melissa Armo, founder and top educator and lead trader at thestockswish.com. Melissa, please take the stage. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you, Online Trader Central. Welcome. Can everybody hear me? Can everyone see the green slide? My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today's lecture is going to be um, how you can learn a strategy, a strategy that I do and created uh, to become a career trader. This may be something you've thought about, but not really taken seriously. Um, so if you're here tonight, you can ask me questions and type in the room. I will say the question out loud and answer your questions for you. And we're gonna go through and talk about my strategy. And then we're gonna talk about the trade today, uh, the gap today that I did, the stock I traded, and then we're gonna talk about what I do. You can email me here if you have any questions at all at melissa at thestockswish.com. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Skype. So here we are. It's June, June 6th. It's halfway point of the calendar year, and it's a good time for you to evaluate your financial goals. Okay, where are you at for 2017? I always like to take, you know, a step back and, and see, you know, are, are, am I on pace, you know, for making my goals for the year? And how can I trade better? What can I do? How could I be more profitable? Are you on target to achieve your goals this year with your trading? If you're a trader and you're trading right now, be honest with yourself. Maybe you are ahead of your goals. Maybe you're, maybe you're behind. Are you on target to achieve your goals this year with your job? Say your job is not trading, but something else, okay? Are you happy with the money you currently earn in your career? A lot of people, um, don't get the same raises or overtime they did in years past. Companies have cut back. So learning how to train is something that you can do part-time for part-time income. Are you exhausted at this halfway point during the year with the hours you're working at your job? I used to do mortgages and I worked seven days a week and it was exhausting. That's one of the reasons I got into trading. So think about that. What are you doing right now for your career? Is it too tiring? And also it's good to look at, does your job, you know, run you, run your life, you know, and, and you don't have any free time. That isn't good, okay? Balance is very important. And the nice thing about trading in the market is that the market is closed at four o'clock. You, you, you're done, okay? And I don't trade all day anyways, but also the market is closed on Saturdays and Sundays and the weekend. And does your career offer a chance for advancement? Very important too, if you wanna make more money in the future. And again, are you on pace to make the same money as you made last year or less or more? Obviously the idea would be more. And this could be you know, if you're trading right now. And are you getting paid at your job what you're worth? And do you find yourself that you're enjoying what you're doing every day? So I think it's very, very important for whatever you do for your career to enjoy it. And I think since I spent so many years doing a career that I really didn't enjoy, it really it just was hit me when the mortgage industry started to change that I not only was I not making the money that I wanted to anymore, or didn't see the long-term advancement in doing mortgages or banking, I also wasn't happy. And when I found out about trading, I never knew what a chart was until I started trading, but I really do enjoy reading charts. I love the analysis of charts. I love reading candlesticks. I love what I do, and I basically trade based on technical analysis. So we're gonna talk about the strategy I do here today, but I train based on technical analysis, advanced technical analysis. And what makes me happy, what I love about what I do with trading is I love reading charts. It's the favorite thing I love about what I'm doing, besides also, of course, the money. And today was a very nice day, a very good trade today, which we will go over, but you can make substantial money in the market enough to support you for your career if you want to do it and if you want to get serious about it. I think a lot of people just don't get serious enough about their trading and it's unfortunate because a lot of people never see their full potential because they flip around from thing to thing to thing and never stick with one thing that actually works. And my system, my strategy works and we are going to discuss it today and we're going to go through 
the trades in the last six days to, to show you, okay, the gaps, the, the stocks, the moves the stocks had so you can see. I do day trade equities. That's what I do when I say trading for a career. But you can use my strategy for options too or swing trades if you want to, okay? So the nice thing about trading, like I said, is you can have both. If you enjoy it, it's fun. This is a chart of the QQQ, the overall market ETF, and also you can make money, which is obviously the, the best of both worlds in a career. So why trade? Trading is a career that can offer you financial freedom, fulfillment, and happiness. You can have the life you want if you're willing to learn something new. And when you come to me, no matter, even if you've been trading for years and years and years, you'll absolutely learn something new from me because I do gaps in a very unique way. That's a strategy I trade and the system is my mine. I own it. I created it. So you will learn something new and develop new skills if you come to learn from me. And, and the idea of learning something new will help you to move into a different career path. Okay. Just like if you had to go to school for something. So the nice thing about trading is it offers you freedom, freedom of time because you can trade from home, a chance for advancement because you really will earn more money over time as you become a more proficient trader and you risk more money, you will make more, which you can't do until you prove to yourself that you know what you're doing. But it's, it's, it's an amazing thing because you can work from home and be your own boss. And I've been on my own boss for a long time now not just because I own my own business, the stock swoosh, but because I've been training on my own even before I started the business. So I'm the one that sets my own schedule. And, and that's very important. And there's a sense of freedom and independence that goes with that. And if you're an independent person, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the strategy that I trade and teach sets up very quickly early in the morning. Occasionally you do get an afternoon trade, which I did today, which we will review. But most days I'm done trading between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And the strategy that I trade is called Golden Gaps and it's a name I created. Golden Gaps not only work fast, okay, but they have a lot of momentum and they offer a good amount of money for the time that you're in the trade. So this is, this is the critical thing that makes trading so, so enticing is you can make several thousand dollars on a day in a couple of minutes, sometimes in a couple of seconds. And that is something that very few careers offer. Most times, if you want to make two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000, you have to work a whole week or a whole month. Not so in the market, not so in trading. If you get a good trade, you can make that much in one trade or one day. And it's important to, to know that you can keep doing what you're doing. You can have the consistency that you have a sustainable trading method, because if you're going to do it for your career, you have to have a strategy and a system that works all year long. In any market condition, bullish, bearish, whatever okay so it's the amount of time trading for the money that makes trading for career very very enticing and also the fact you can work from home which is convenient and if you are thinking about you know investing for the future retirement funds uh you know anything like that you will you will do yourself a favor if you can learn to invest for long term in the market by reading your statements and understanding things if even if you have your money with someone else and, and a lot of people don't know how to do that. And I think that's important. And also you can trade if you're retired. You know, you don't have to live in a fixed income. You could be retired and trade and have extra money coming in while you're retired and still collecting pensions or social securities. It's like a part-time job because of the hours. So the, the biggest thing, the biggest message that I can offer to people is that you only need one strategy to make trading your career. That's it. That's because I've done it. So one quality strategy is all you need to learn to pay yourself on a regular basis in the market. Knowing one good strategy that you can replicate over and over and over for profits can ultimately change your trading world. And it can take you from being a losing trader to a profitable trader. It's interesting, there's a, there's a lady, okay, she's, she's an older lady, I don't think she's here tonight, Patty, she was here last night. She has been a losing trader for years, okay, and she's taking my trades now and making money and it's it's almost amazing i will have to meet this lady someday because she was been following me for a very long time and finally decided she she wanted to to sign up for my services and and do the trades and so it's very interesting because i truly believe that i can take you know any person at all that wants to listen to me understand what i'm doing 
and learn and, and follow the trades and become profitable. Even someone that was losing for years, even someone that's been trading for years. But you do have to open up your mind and you have to listen to the things that I say when I talk and when I teach. But the market can offer you a real lifelong career if you have a strategy that makes money consistency consistently. So what do I do? As I said, I do a strategy called gaps. Now, what is a golden gap? A golden gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. And we will review what a gap is and in a minute. I'm going to pull up a chart. It is called a golden gap because it is like finding gold in the market to me. And that's how I came up with the name. Because when you find them, they have big moves with volatility. And that's how you're making money as a trader. You make money as a trader momentum. Okay. For example, if you bought 4,000 shares of a stock at $9 and it rallies up to $10, that's a $1 move with 4,000 shares, you would make four grand. So you have to get momentum. Otherwise, if the stock opened at $9 and went to $9.05, you'd only make five cents, okay? So you need stocks to move, $1, $2, moves in them. And today's stock went $5 plus. So how do you get these big moves? They're made by institutional money. Professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap, okay? Now, Candy has a good question here. I'll just answer this. You have, you have to have big capital also to do what you're doing. Not to do what I'm doing. No, you do not have to have big capital. Now, I don't know what you mean by big, but for example, there's two types of trading accounts that you could use to day trade. One is called a retail account. You can open up a retail brokerage account. They will give you four to one leverage for margin for day trades and you need a minimum of $25,000, or you can day trade at a place called a proprietary day trading brokerage account, where you would open up an account with a minimum of $2,500, and you would get 10 to one leverage intraday. So there's two different options for places to trade as day traders. So these are, like I said, these are day trades, so I'm not holding overnights over four o'clock. So either option is available to you. The, the benefit of going with a proprietary day trading firm is you get the 10 to 1 leverage, okay? The benefit of going with a retail firm is if you make money at 10 a.m. that day, you can, you can take it out immediately. At a proprietary day trading firm, they usually have funding times where you can take your money out every two weeks or once a month, depending on how you set it up with them. So the benefit is you can pull your money out immediately in a retail account, but you do have to have more funds, but you get less leverage. I've traded at both through the course of the eight years plus that I've been trading, and I've found benefits to trade at both places. To be honest with you, it really doesn't matter. It's whatever you can afford to do it. If you can only afford to open an account with $2,500 to day trade, then start there and build your account up to $25,000, and then go to a retail place if you want to, but it's not necessary, okay? because you're gonna get less margin. So it's really up to you. And all of them offer very similar platforms. The, the very critical thing that you need is you gotta have charts, you gotta have a live level two, okay? And I prefer to trade with hotkeys, so it's good to have a platform with hotkeys. And also you gotta trade with a broker that has good shorts. So no matter where you go, a proprietary day trading firm or retailer firm, you gotta have good short access because the strategy and the trades I'm gonna talk about today are shorts. Um, so some brokers out there on both ends of the spectrum don't have a good short list, but I refer people to the ones that do and I know where they are, okay? So no, you don't have to have a lot of capital. You could trade with $2,500. So it's, it's really what you can afford. You can only trade and risk the money in a trade that you can afford to lose if the trade doesn't work. Uh, you know, without getting too much off target here, I want to get back to the webinar. My system is about an 80% win ratio, which means that for every 10 trades, you got to figure two are going to be losers, eight are going to be winners. Okay? Makes sense? Anyways, getting back to hear what I was saying, in the case of a bullish gap, institutional money is buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the day. In the case of a bearish gap, meaning the stock that's gapping down, institutional money is selling or shorting the stock. And that's really what happened in today's play, which was HDS. In fact, I'm gonna put it in the ticker symbol here. Um, that had selling action. Therefore, the stock moves lower in the trading day. 
Anything you do, anything you trade is about probability. Anything that can put the odds in your favor to trade is going to give you an edge. So the edge comes from using a system that gives you a high probability. So what, what is it that gives me a high probability to hit an 80% win ratio? It's my scoring system. My system involves a 26-point rating system that tells me what stock to trade every day, and also I'm very experienced in doing it. Like today, for example, I rated three things. Two of them worked. One never set up. Right before the open, I flipped to the one, and it fell off a planet and swooshed. So you have to have something that's going to tell you that this is a good one. And I have a scoring system, okay? It tells me what stock to trade every day, and it's looking at the daily chart, and I look at it in the pre-market, and it's using technical analysis because I'm looking at the chart, okay? I'm a chartist. So the high probability is in the quality and detail in the rating system. This is the crux of my system. And I look at 26 things. That sounds like a lot, but it's really not that many things. And actually, if I could come out with 126 things and never have a losing trade, I'd do it. I don't have that. But, you know, I don't mind looking at 26 things if it means I'm making money consistently and I get it right. Okay? It takes about 5 to 10 minutes to rate a gap if you're brand, brand new. And if you're not new and you're used to doing it, it's about one to three minutes, okay, once you get experience with the system. So my system looks at bullish gaps and bearish gaps, but tonight I'm going to talk about the bearish gap because that's the class I'm doing this weekend. I'm doing a bearish gap class, and all the ones in the webinar here today we're going to go over are bearish gaps. They were shorts, and that's what I was saying. you got to have a good short list. The purpose of my system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning in the pre-market using a checklist. And that tells you what to do, and you follow it. How much money you risk, whether it's $200 a trade or $500 a trade or $1,000 a trade, is going to depend on what? Going back to Candy's question, it's going to depend on the size of your account. So, you know, for example, you can't risk $1,000 in a trade if you have a $2,500 account. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you want advice on that, you can ask me. But it should be based on a percentage of your account size of the cash value. So the purpose or the philosophy is to find a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big moves on the day. Early confirmation of my bias. I want to know right away if this is going to work, okay, which I did today in the gap. And then I'm looking for precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, which actually the gap today did end up having once it started to really get going. I'm looking for probabilities. I find that traders are very, very, very black and white. One of the reasons that traders love to trade use, using indicators, which, which I have only a few in my charts and I do not make trading decisions based on them, but one of the reasons that traders just love indicators or systems where you buy things that gives you an alert, where it goes and it tells you to take the trade, which is not my system at all, by the way. You actually have to use your brain um, when you go through the process and read it, okay? Is people want, you know, this black and whiteness with trading. It's about probabilities. It's not black and white. Trading is gray, okay? You find your way into that gray area and you find success. And one of the reasons that people fail is they're looking for black and white and black and white and black and white and black and white. And they want the they want to get out of a trade at the high of the day. They want to get out of a trade at the low of the day. They want to get this thing and this thing and this thing. They're, they they want something where they just don't even have to think. No, you have to think. It is a skill. You get good at the skill. You make money more than you lose, okay, way more, and you gain that skill and you're living in that gray area, which is about probabilities, which is that you're going to get a lot of trades right and a couple are going to lose. And it has nothing to do with you and it has nothing to do with the market. It's just you're playing the odds, okay, and that's what probabilities are. So any questions so far? We're going to go over here, the Golden Gap system in the last six days. We're going to go through it. We're going to go through the trains. Does anyone have any questions about anything so far? Let me know. Now, we're going back here. This was back on the 18th. I'm going back. This is before the holiday because I took a bunch of days off, about a week or so off before the holiday. But I wanted to, sh I, I wanted to show you if you had taken the calls and rated the gaps, okay, and been in the trading room, what the setups were. So you can get an idea what I'm looking for every day to see if you could have made any money to, to pay your bills even in the last six days, if you had traded. 
Again, where you open up your account is up to you. You can ask me for referrals. These trades here, I'm gonna use a certain set risk amount, and then we're gonna total and tally them at the end. The one trade here was Cisco, okay? This was a gap down. Now, before we get going here on this, I'm gonna to explain to you what a gap is for those of you that don't know. It's hard to see here because the clock was behind these little candlesticks. But the night before at four o'clock, the stock closed up here around 34 bucks. The next day, this had earnings. This was back, like I said, on the 18th. Cisco had earnings and opened in the next day here around 31 something. So this is a gap. It's when the stock closes at four o'clock and open the, opens the next day at 9.30, a different price. Stocks gap down and they gap up. For the purposes of what we're talking about today, we're talking about stocks that are gapping down. And as I said, golden gaps are where you're looking to play it in the direction of the gap. So if this is gapping down, we're looking to short it, to follow through to the downside. This did not have a big move. In fact, it had a very small move. The target on this was 31. It just dropped and went there and then pittered off. But this did have one setup in it. You could have shorted it and gotten out. Again, not every move is going to be like today's, although we are going to go over it. But you will have a couple moves like today's HDS, which fell $5 plus in a month's time. You put together a, a career, a week, a month, a, a year by chunking out trades and not trading the days that nothing meets your criteria. So here we are. Let's look here at Cisco. We're going to be looking at an approximate risk of about $1,000 in all these trades. If you had shorted it, boom, 31.30. Risk was 30 cents. You're sizing, sizing yourself based on the share quantity here of the risk. On 3,000 shares, your risk is what? $900. Exit at the target. It went a little bit past that, but that was the first target. Again, you're not looking for any major move in this one here. You could scalp it out for 900 bucks. In fact, today's trade, a bunch of people, some people took three or four trades in today's trades and scalped it out. Anyways, that's real money though, okay? Then the next day, this was a much, much bigger move here, was Foot Locker. Again, stock closed to your gap down. This is a one minute chart, okay? We're looking at a one minute chart. So I'm trading on a one minute chart. I look at the gap on the daily chart, but I trade on the one minute. So anyways, Foot Locker set up here or here you could have shorted it and it fell off the planet. Down here we have the clock. Opens at 930. Do you see the period of time in here where you're looking to take the trade? So the selling action is coming in here in the beginning part of the period. So I'm looking to get in and out right away as quickly in the morning. That's when all of these are happening. Now, sometimes you do get stocks that have bigger moves later in the day, but usually I'm in and I'm out very quickly. Whatever money I make, I'm done in the morning, unless I see the potential for a bigger target or a bigger move. So price of the entry here in Foot Locker, you short it, 60.75, boom. Risk was 75 cents. Again, with a risk of about a thousand bucks, $900 here and 1,400 shares. Exit at 59, which it did keep going. I'll go back to the chart in a minute. You could have made over two grand. You could have made 2,450 bucks. I'm gonna go back. So that was the target. Take it over, 59 drops. It actually went further. So you could have made more than that here in this. But again, it's not about being a pig. Again, the black and white, you're never gonna get out of something at the low of the day. Your job, your goal, if you're gonna do this for a career, is that you have to book money in the trades where you're up. And actually, I said that in the room this morning uh, to some people because we did, a, we did a late trade in HDS. I said, make sure you make money in this today, people, because it worked. Sometimes people wanna hold things as huge, huge, massive targets. I never fault myself for seeing things go to some bigger target if I don't get it. Like, for example, this day in the Foot Locker, I was happy. Happy with the money I made in that. The fact that it went down and almost went to 58 broker doesn't matter to me. What matters is being profitable and making the money. Then the room was closed for a week, and then it was closed for the Monday and Tuesday, the Memorial Day holiday, the week after. Then there was a gap. This is after the holiday. It was a slow, slow day on the 31st. This is May 31st after the holiday. Another gap here that happened in Michael Kors. These retailers are getting crushed lately. Stock closed up here. Open down here, gap down. So the night before it closed up here. This is, again, a one-minute chart. Stock gap down. You're watching this to see if it's going to set up to short it. This did not have a big move. Again, but it had a short move in it. If you did it, and got out. Boom, take it, get out. Okay. So not a huge massive move in this, but enough to get paid. If you wanted to do it for a quickie, boom. Time period between 9.30 and 10. 
Again, 9, 30, and 10. Kept going a little bit more here into 10, 15. But again, if you're looking to play this first half an hour, you're in and you're out. Short entry in this was, this was a big stop. 33.30, 70 cents. Again, you're risking about what? $1,000. You don't have to risk that. You can divide it by two, divide it by four, what you can afford. Exit in here, boom, drop 50 cents in, out. You could have made 700 bucks, okay? This is for such a short time of work, people. All of these trades here, Coors, Foot Locker, Cisco. Do you see the time that you're in these trades and you're out? Okay. You're in and you're out of these trades so, 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 so quickly. Any questions so far? Now, the next one here was a loser. EXPR, again, as I said, sometimes you're going to have losers. This did not work. It failed. I like this gap, but it didn't work. So I use hard stops. When I take a trade, I put a stop in. And, and I want to be out if it doesn't work. If it stops me, I'm out. Stock close to your gap down, open, set up, boom, I was in, put the stop, got taken out. In this case here, it just didn't work. If the stock ever resets up, you can take it again. In this case, it didn't, it failed on the day. So I took the stop and took a loss in this. It's very important, I think, to put stops in in trades because if you don't, something could really go against you and you could lose an, an unlimited amount of risk. And part of the idea of making money in your trades is that you do take the stop so that when you have you know, two good winners, you're not giving all that money back in one loser that you let get away from you. So the entry in this, you shorted it at six. Nice stop in here. Risked again about a thousand bucks. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Had to take a loser in this one. Now, EXPR was one of the two gaps that I looked at on the day. As it turns out, HPE had, was another good gap that I rated. Some people in the trading room did this immediately. I missed the first entry in this, but this did have a second entry. Anyways, this fell hard. You could have done them both in the morning. But there was a second entry in this here that dropped to the target of 17.50 late. Actually, this kind of went a little bit like the uh, HTS today, set up and had a bigger move later. Anyways, HPE, you could have shorted this, put the stop, got the drop. This whole move in here is you making money when the stock is falling and dropping because you are making money when you see the red if you're short. So you are taking the trade and you're shorting the stock and you're putting a stop. And if it fails, you get stopped out and you take the loss. This did not happen though. It ended up going on to work. And as I said, you could have done it on a one minute chart. This is a five minute chart entry here. It's a little bit later. You could have shorted this at 18. Risk is 20 cents on 5,000 shares. You risk 1,000 bucks, boom. At the target, 1750, you could have made $2,500. Nice move in here, again, 50 cents. And here's a good example in here. How much buying power would you have needed in order to take this trade? Galahad, figure it out. Anybody else? Do it, do it in your head. 50 cents. Or 5,000 shares times $18 is what? Oh, it looks like we lost Galad. Looks like he got booted from Hakam. Barry. Barry's a student. Or anybody that's not a student. If you wanted to take his candy asked about the buying power, how would you figure it out? Here, let's go through it together. Barry, you, you should be able to do this. 5,000 shares. times $18 per strike per stock price equals what? Does nobody know how to do this? Barry, you know how to do this. Are you there, Barry? Turf knows how to do it. Turf is saying 90,000. So let's take 90,000 in buying power. So that's not in money but that's in buying power. So if you would have what? A retail account, well, you have to have 25,000 minimum and you would have 100,000 in buying power. If you had a proprietary day trading account, you would have needed what? A 10 to one margin, 9,000 cash in the prop account. Got it? I'm just, I'm just telling you here what you would have needed for a, a substantial trade like this. 
Now, you know, obviously the EXPR was a little bit cheaper, but this is a good range to give you some idea. Now let's look here at RH. RH was another gap. Again, the clock's covering up here. Close the night before up here at 5750-ish. Open in the morning down here at 43 something. Crushing gap on this. Restoration hardware was last week. Stock open, rally, boom. Short it, drop, get the drop. Nice move in here. Could've got it here, could've got it here. Beautiful, okay? Another really big move. Price of the entry, the shortest, 43.50. Risk is what? 75 cents. If you were risking about a thousand bucks or nine hundred dollars or twelve hundred shares, what? Again, a dollar out. First target out. Reversal time out. You could have gotten this down. You could have got a buck out of it. Nice trade in here. You could have made one thousand two hundred sixty dollars. Really, really nice move. Again, time of the day, of the period you're trading between nine thirty and ten. See it. Then Monday, there were no trades. So yesterday and Monday, there were no trades. It was a rest day. Again, I have a criteria. I rate the gaps. I'm looking for something that rates 20 points or more per my 26 point rating system. If I don't find any, I don't trade that day. I'll do a lecture in the room. I'll talk, I'll go over the market. If we have options on, I'll go over them. Not day trading if something doesn't meet my criteria. The other benefit of having a system is that you follow it every day. And if we're gonna do this for a career, you have to be like that. It's almost like you're running your own business when you're your own trading business, when you're trading, you're going through it and you're saying to yourself, I, I can't go to work today, but at least you're not losing. So it's a little bit different than a normal job where if you show up, you get paid. You can show up every morning in the market, but if somebody doesn't meet your criteria, then you can't trade. Now, there was a Google option trade that a lot of people got out of that I had called last week that ran up yesterday. So even though there weren't any day trades, there was a a nice exit if you want to get out of the Google option trade yesterday. Some people are still in it. Um, I called Google calls for the 985 strike last week here on the 31st. It ran up and was really nicely profitable. More than 100% return investment yesterday. So some people took the exit there, watched that instead of doing any day trades, and some people are still in it. I didn't see where this closed today, but this is headed right up to $1,000. So you can do options with my system too. I'm just showing you here a trade that was on in the last couple of days. And uh, one of the students actually made four grand on this and got out yesterday. He was afraid he got out too early. The stock did make a little bit move of up more today. Again, I didn't see where this closes, but it expires Friday. So again, no piggy targets. You're up four grand, get out, okay? No piggies. And this is Mark, he's new actually. Um, go back to HPE, sure. What's your question here in HPE? Well, I, I have six different entries that I teach in the class, which is I'm doing this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. How do I, how do I pick my entry? I just look for the setup. I have six different setups. I look for the setups. If I get the setup on the live day, I take it. So I'm never entering any trade in the pre-market. I don't enter any trades in the post-market. I'm entering only trades on the live day between 9.30 and 4. So I rate the gap in the morning pre-market. Then it has to set up. So in other words, Fran was a gap that I uh, looked at this morning in the pre-market. Fran never set up. Fran never triggered on the live day. So it's, there's two pieces. One, you have to rate the gap. But that's what tells you, watch Fran. Watch HDS, watch MIK. Then it still has to set up on the live day because what if it doesn't? It might not. So that's why I don't get in in the pre-market. So the six entries I teach in the class, but it is a combination of A, rating it, knowing what stock to watch, and then B, you still have to watch it and take it, okay? And then also, like I said, I put in the stock because I don't want it to go against me in some aggressive way. Sometimes a stock will set up fake and then flip, okay? Well, there's only one strategy, which is gaps. The entries are six different entries that I teach in the class, and you gotta learn every one. The thing is, you don't know which one you're gonna get, Turf. You don't know, I don't know. I get up in the morning, I look at HDS, I don't know which entry it's gonna, how it's gonna set up. I don't know until the live day, and that's part of, part of training, and one of the benefits of being with me in the room is 
I'm very good at reading in real live time really quickly, really fast what a stock is doing and how it's moving because you don't know. I don't know at 8 a.m. if I love HPE, for example, that the entry will be $18 to short it. I don't know that because obviously I don't know where it's going to open. I'm seeing the gap in the morning. The stock closes the night before here. Oops, hold on. The stock closed the night before here at 1875-ish. In the morning, if I rate it, the stock's moving. So I might rate the gap. Let's say I rate it around here, which is where it opened. But anything could have happened. Stock could have opened down here. Could have opened here. Could have opened anywhere. So you can't, you can't even know that because it's moving. Actually, let me see if I can bring up here um, the one from today just to show you something. Yeah, I can, I can bring this up here. Let me just show you this really quick. Um, here's, this is a great, great example. And then we'll go back to the webinar in a minute. This was today's gap. And I am going to go over this after I go over, uh, the next one. Um, here, let me pretend this didn't happen. So I rated the gap this morning there. That was the stock. That's in the morning. This is the pre-market. Stock's gapping. It's real. Boo, boo, boo. So I'm rating this in an area. It's it's not one number. I'm rating it in as the stock is trading live in the morning pre-market. And then, boom. This is happening in the morning. So I rated this around here. And then all of a sudden, it was down here. It, it dropped $2 in 15 minutes. There it is. We watched it. I saw it. It went like that. So the ratings can change as well. So to say that to, you know, to, to do something or to say it, to know the exact entry would be X, Y, Z, you don't know because look what it did. It dropped even more. This might have failed on the live day. It didn't. It worked. I mean, this was a huge trade. But the bottom line is that it, it, it might have done something very different on the live day. You don't know. You don't know until it happens. So you don't know the entry until it sets up, which happens on the live day. And that is something I teach in the class. But when you rate it, you rate it at a, at a moving price. Okay? And then you still have to watch it. Okay. Um, where was I? Okay, so RH, yes, this was a good one too. This was Friday. Nice move, okay? Now, oh, here's today's. Here's today's. This is, so there was nothing on Monday. Today is Tuesday. This stock opened and swooshed. And again, that's something you'll learn in the class. But the bottom line is that it, it had continuous selling action. We were talking about institutional selling. Today was a great example of that in this stock. Fell off a planet, okay? So I did this late for me. Kind of scalped the first trade in here. I shorted it here and then ended up getting out in here. I wanted it to keep breaking. I felt 33, 33, 33. It's going to get to 33. It didn't get there right in the morning. So I ended up doing two trades in this today. So I kind of scalped this in here. Some people did get this up in here, but it really didn't have an exact entry. But I, I did make some money on this in the morning. And I kind of stopped, but I felt like, oh, this would really go if it's set up later. And it did. And mostly because it swooshed. Price of the entry, again, this is the late morning entry in here. 33.95, 55 cents on 2,000 shares. Again, you're risking about 1,000 bucks. $1,100 was a risk. And I get out, boom, when it dropped and started to bounce, I just took it. So made 45 cents on this one, better than nothing, 900 bucks. But I really felt the potential to have a big, big day today. Why? It was a good, good gap. It was a solid gap and it, it opened and swooshed. And again, today the market was bullish. Despite the fact that the market was bullish, this thing just fell to the floor. Okay. So I wanted to, to do a second trade in this, which I don't normally do, but I told everybody in the room, you can do a 15 minute setup in this. If you want to today, it's going to set up because it's swooshed. So here it was. I will find out tomorrow morning who did this in the room. Um, this was the bigger play. So stock dropped in the morning. Here's 15 minute. Here you get the big sell off rallied. Boom. Okay. Short of this in the late afternoon. And, and it, it had a decent stop for a 15 minute targeting it again was 33. It did get down there and it did break it a little bit. It could have gone to 32. That was in sight, but it just was exhausted. By the time it dropped down in here, it was getting into two o'clock. Anyways, entry in the 15 minute was 34.55, 75 cents. 
on 2,000 shares. In this case here, I ramped it up a little bit because it was up from the morning, 1,500 bucks. Exit, I, I bar by barred it in the one minute chart. I wasn't gonna let it get over 3,290. It did break down to 3,280-ish. And then I ended up taking it once it was bouncing. So had a good exit on this, very, very happy. Total profit in the second trade in the late afternoon trade was $3,300. Rare, but can happen. And mainly because of the swoosh. The stock swoosh today told me and told everybody in the room that you could trade the stock all day. And that very often happens when you have something that swooshes. It had a bigger target, it had a bigger move, and it did it, okay? So every once in a while, I will do a late afternoon trade, and I do review that in the class too. Now let's go over how much money would you have made in shorting stocks in the trading room with the calls I gave in the room, in the gaps that I rated in the last six days. I have five days up there, but I added today, which is six. So it was Cisco, Foot Locker, then I was off for vacation. Coors, HP, EXPR was a loser. So one loser in the last six days, RH and HDS today. So there was one losing trade in the last six days, one. If you followed me in the room and did the calls of the things that I said, and I've been calling the market very well too, which has been bullish. And I've been saying that all along, it's just not, not falling, not dropping. Even today, the spy gap down and didn't fall. So in six days, if you did all these trades and none of them were to any dream targets, biggest one was today because of the swoosh, but all of these could have held longer. Okay. Full locker could have held longer. The, um, HDS, could have gotten the morning trade. I didn't get that big move in the morning. It was a, a scalp in the morning. RH went more. And you could have made over 11 grand. Now this is risking about $1,000. And the last trade I did today was a little bit more, but you know, I was ready up. The bottom line is that it, it, you know, the money is there for you to do this as a career. Hands down, it is. No excuses for people if they're not, if they're, if they're having their head that they can't do this or it's impossible to train, that's baloney. Okay, you can make money in the market. If you're not, you don't have a good system. If you're not, you're screwing up and doing something wrong. You can keep doing what you're doing and losing, but you're probably doing something that doesn't work. It is not beyond the realm of possibility to make money day trading. I know, I'm living proof, and I'm teaching people to do it. And, and, and you know, I've had the business for more than five years. I've been trading for more than eight. It's not a fluke. I mean, almost every day I'm doing emails, you know, telling people the plays of the days that I've had um, you know, in the trading room. I mean, I'm emailing people on my marketing list almost every single solitary day. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm not pulling these trades out of thin air. They're real, they're there, they're there every morning. It's up to you to decide if you want to trade and do it. The opportunity exists, but you know, there is some commitment level that it's going to take from you to do it, which is learning from me, taking the class, opening up an account, starting small maybe, Maybe you can't afford to risk $1,000 in a trade. That's okay. Start small. Learn it. Learn it so you can get the confidence so you can do it to eventually make this kind of money. Now, if you wanted to risk $500, you just, you know, that's all you could afford. Say you have a $5,000 prop account, you could have taken these same trades and made over $5,500, okay? Really, really, really nice profit. Some people don't make that in a month. That's with a $500 risk in six days. So here it is. If you had risked $500 in six days, you would have made over five grand. And if you had risked between 1,000 and 1,500, because I risked a little more in the one today, this afternoon, you could have made 11,000. This is not including any of the option trades. And actually, there's a couple option trades that are still outstanding that are on right now. And I called another one, a new one today, actually, for people. But this is a good amount of money to trade the system as a career. It is. There's enough money from you in the market. You just have to learn how to do it. You have to learn how to be stable with your trading, not doing a million different ticker symbols, okay? In the six days here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight ticker symbols, that's it. In six days of trading, that is less than probably many, many trading rooms out there call or even look at. That's how you do it, it's the quality you're looking for quality stocks with volume, not cheap stocks, not crap, not low float stocks, not penny stocks, not crap ones. You want stocks that move. You only need a, a couple, okay, one a day, maybe two. The key is to find the system daily, taking the entries, booking the profits when you're up, not being a piggy, not trading when there's no good gaps that qualify for the system which I've, I've become very disciplined about 
in the number of years that I'm trading and particularly since I'm, I'm leading people now, you know, in the trading room. So the, the key to my success and the key to your success, if you come and learn from me, really is the 26 points because that tells you what to do. It tells you what to do. You rate the gap. It tells you to watch this one, this one, this one. You watch them in the open. You take them when they set up. All right? Any questions so far here? The only difference between a beginner trader, intermediate trader, advanced trader is size. So if you want to do this for a career and you feel like, you know, you can't take size, you can only take 100 shares or 200 shares. Some people are only taking one contract in the, in the stocks like Google. That's, that's okay. Start where you're at right now and move up as you go along and get better over time. Build your account up. Build your confidence up. Your goal could be trading with size, but the, but the idea is that you have to start somewhere. And a lot of people, you know, can't risk $1,000 or even $500 in a trade. So start with what you can. Risk $50. Risk $100. If your goal is to do it for a bigger, longer-term thing for a career, then you should, there should be no sense of urgency right now anyways. If your long-term goal is to do this seriously, then the most important thing for you is to learn it to get good. And all the time that you waste not learning it is the longer it's going to take for you to get where you want to be with your goal, okay? The money will come faster once you learn how to do it. And that means you will learn from me in the trading room and in the class, okay? But two or three great plays really can make your month. And, and, and HDS today was no you know, was, was no exception. And you play like that, you know, one of those a week, we usually get an earning season, which is not right now, but it's coming up. Anyways, for example, if you take 200 shares, you can make 200 bucks if it drops a dollar, you know, the, which there was like a dollar 60 plus move in the afternoon move in HDS today. Again, 2,000 shares moves a dollar, two grand, 8,000 shares, you can make a grand profit. There's some people that are doing these option trades that I'm doing that are just plopping on the size. You know, 40, 50 contracts in some of them. You know, the, the amount that you risk of the money that you risk is, it has to do with the size of your account and your risk parameters you set for yourself. I can, I can give you some guidelines, but it's what you're comfortable with. Anyways, people always ask me, how many gaps do we get? In earning season, three to five a day. Non-earning season, three to five a week. Just like I said, there was no trades yesterday. So in the in-between times, there may be a Monday where we don't take a trade. That's okay. At least we didn't lose. You've got to keep the money that you make from the market. You're looking for a gap that rates per the 26-point system, and that's how you do it. Any questions so far from anyone here, let me know. Okay. The more often you make money on a consistent basis, the more confidence you will build in yourself. And this is very important. And the more conviction you will have in your own ability to trade well. I'm working on that with people. One of the most valuable things that you learn during the Golden Gap course is to have conviction in the Golden Gap strategy. And that's what you learn from me in the class. This conviction will help you produce positive results. And that's how you're going to keep going. Staying positive might be a challenge for some traders, but it's a requirement for success. And it's a requirement for success if you want to be successful trading the market. In any field that you do, you have to have, be confident that you can do well with it. And trading is no different. And the most important thing is that a lot of people lack confidence in the overall market. They've been losing for so many years. They've taken so many different classes and never you know, figured anything out. Don't know how to trade. Don't know how to read a chart, right? Can't predict things like I do. And then they lose conviction and confidence in the market itself. This is real, people. There's no reason for you to feel like you can't have conviction in the market. It's there. It's just that people want that black and white. And, and, and they want easy. Easy meaning doesn't cost anything to learn it, which is not the reality of life. And easy meaning that they want to press a button and just look at an indicator to take a trade and have all the money in the world. That's not reality, okay? Reality is it costs money to learn from someone that knows what they're doing, which is me. And reality is you're going to have to learn the skill and you're going to have to maybe unlearn some things that you've been doing in the past that just flat out don't work when you come with me. And particularly I found people really think they know how to read support and resistance correctly and then they do my class and, and they, they realize they don't. They don't. They don't even know how to read support and resistance right. And they've been trading for years. Okay. Um, you know, I only focus on one strategy. I try to do one symbol a day. I may look at two things because I don't know which one's going to set up, but that is how you can be successful, okay? Normal, regular people can learn how to trade the market. Actually, Patty's a great example. Uh, regular people, 
Mark's a regular guy, okay? Some of the people I'm teaching have a lot of money and some don't have that much. It's, it's all over the board of the people that I've taught. Some experienced, some not experienced, some have small accounts, some have big accounts. You know, some, some are big traders, some have been trading for over 20 years, some, some are older than me uh, and, have been, and have been, you know, trading for forever. Whatever your experience level is currently, it doesn't matter. I can teach you fresh out of the game and you can learn it. It's, you just don't want to continue to throw money into the market or waste precious time, you know, spending between now and 2018, trying to make money and doing a system or strategy you're doing right now that is not profitable and flat out doesn't work. I had an interesting conversation with a guy a couple weeks ago. He was losing money. Um, he paid for a class. He insists that, that, that the person that he, you know, learned from was, knew what they were doing. But he, you know, he was losing money and he said the person was hard to follow, but he was trying to follow them anyways. You know, I think that one of the benefits of coming with me is that I'm not hard to follow. If I tell you in the room we're watching these two stocks, that's it. We're watching, you know, HDS. We're watching Fran. Have them up. Boom. This one and this one. They set up. I call it. You take it. You're out. That's it. I'm not looking at 25 ticker symbols. It's not that hard to follow me. I don't make it impossible for you to make money if you're in the trading room with me or following me. I make it very easy for you. This is the one that we're watching. This one and this one. That's it. Okay? All you have to do is take the trade. So anyways, a career in trading offers money. It offers freedom because of the time. And it offers, obviously, the potential to make more money over time. You can do the options, you can do the day trades, you can do swing trades, and you can increase your risk. So you start your risk out wherever you feel comfortable, and you build it up. And that's how you build yourself up into getting into a career. I mean, it's really, you can't ask for much more. And the fact that you can trade and make money in a couple of minutes a day is one of the things that I, I found most interesting about trading, one of the reasons I wanted to do it, because I felt overworked at my mortgage job. Now, I want to very quickly here talk about something called the four C's. Okay, what is important when you want to come and do this and learn from me? Number one, clarity. Seeing the gap, just seeing it. Training your eye to say, oh my Atlanta, this thing is going to drop like a brick. It's, you see it before it happens. It's a clarity of reading it. Confidence, knowing that you feel confident in the market and you feel confident in yourself that you can press the button and you can take the trade and you can plop on the risk if you can afford it and you can do it and you can make the money and you believe in yourself and you know that you're smart and you've got what it takes and you're going to learn it and you have confidence in yourself to do so. Conviction, conviction which comes from the class. You learn and gain conviction in trading and the ability to make money in the market in the class and you also do in the trading room with me. When I say that you know Amazon is going to a thousand and it does it in a matter of days and you see me making predictions like HDS today which I told the room it was going to go to 33 and it, did, it absolutely did and it would set up in a 15 minute chart in the afternoon and it absolutely did okay you get conviction by trading with me by by hearing me say these things that are going to happen the spy is going to make another brand new all-time high soon when I say these things and then they happen, it seems almost impossible. But when you see that, it gives you conviction that, that this, there is something that is, you can do that's predictable. Does it mean it's predictable 100% of the time? No. But it's predictable enough that it's so amazing that you can predict it to use it to make money. Like, like the way that I called Google when it was running up every day for two weeks and I called it again and it didn't even pull back and it kept going okay the the conviction you get from seeing the, the gaps play out from seeing my calls play out from seeing the trades play out from me saying this is going to happen and then it does whether you take the trade or not and you're just sitting in the room you're like oh my gosh she said that was going to happen how did she know that was going to happen oh the system she rated the gap and the more i do it and 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 you see it if you're not trading with me, you, you know, you're just sitting here watching me and my students make money, which is silly. But, you know, the class, see me make the predictions, it gives you the conviction to do it. And then you've got to have the commitment. The commitment is on you. You have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to take the time to do the class. The class is all day Saturday and all day Sunday. It's 16 hours. It's 9 to 5, June 10th and 11th. It's a 16-hour commitment on a weekend to learn. It's a commitment to, to, to pay attention to open up your mind to doing something new, okay? 
So the Golden Gap course will help you find success in the market, which is what you want. It teaches the 26 points, it teaches the, the entries, it teaches advanced technical analysis, and it's a complete system to learn how to trade because I don't hold anything back in the class. I also even talk about money and how you have to have a certain attitude about money when you're trading and risk. So the class is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. It's an online class, okay? You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's June 10th and 11th, this Saturday and Sunday. You have until Friday to sign up. Cost of the class is $49.99. I already have a bunch of people signed up. If you want to sign up, you have to email me for the sign-up information. It's not on the website. If you want to, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Remember, education is something that you're investing in yourself. You're investing in yourself. It's not like a trade. When you take money in and place money in a trade, it may fail, it may work. But, you know, taking a class is you're investing in yourself because you're learning the information. And you're paying me for that information and for my time to learn and teach you as a mentor to do it, okay? And it is something that is going to pay off for you in the long run if you decide to do it and be in, in my group. So think about what you're doing. If you're not on the road to a successful future between now and the end of 2017, if you feel stuck in your trading or your career, what you're doing, you've got to figure out what you're going to do differently. Okay. If something isn't working in your life, you got to figure out what to do differently. It's the same thing like, uh, oh gosh, well, let's say you're in a relationship. You're in a relationship with someone, you're dating someone and, and you're miserable. It's not working out. You know, you, you just, it was good at the beginning and it's just, there's just, you try to make it work, you try to make it work, you care about the person, you're trying to make it work, but it's not working out, and it's time to break up. So if, you're, if you have a trading strategy and it's not working out, break up with it. Break up with it, just cut the cords, and, and try something new. You know, I think, I think a lot of people do not listen to their intuition. You know, your intuition is telling you, this is working or it's not working. You gotta listen to that, that knowing, that silent voice within you. Many people, do not listen to their intuition. I, I'm a very intuitive trader. I mean, I think that's how I created my system, but I also am like today, where I could be on top of two things and all of a sudden then just go to the net, to the one that works immediately within milliseconds. I'm, I, it's eight years of trading and I've become, I have a sixth sense, a sixth sense which is above and beyond you know, the rating system. But you follow the system, you do it, and if you're in the room with me, I will lead you in the right direction. And that's, you know, that's a huge benefit. Anyways, you can do it, and it's a nice career if you want to. So empower yourself to trade the market. You can have the life you want. Any questions from anyone about anything? This is perfect timing here. We have like two minutes for questions. If you'd like a trial of the trading room, email me. I can send you one for this week. I don't know what we're going to get Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We'll see. My phone number is 929-3200-427. If you want to call, if you have questions, I'll be around. All right. Yeah, just email. Here, here, here's my email. Oops. Here it is. Any questions from anyone? Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me.